Excellent. Thanks, David. Um, so the first question I'd like to uh, I'd like to start with the fact that lots of people might be asking what the hell has entrepreneurship got to do with uh, sustainability? And actually, it's seen it, to extend the metaphor of uh, speed dating, we could probably look at entrepreneurship as being the sexy part. Okay, so it's, it's a part that is probably going to happen at some point. But actually, people see it as inappropriate, and they don't really want to talk about it. But actually, if you want to, if things need to happen, then it's the individuals that need to be doing something, right? It's the people who are animating it. So this is why entrepreneurs are important to the process, because we're looking at using resources in the most appropriate way. Okay? So it's actually, it's nothing we should shy away for. We should embrace the entrepreneur with sustainability. Um, so I'm specifically looking at here at some research we've been doing within the uh, Service and Enterprise Research Centre. And it's looking at making a difference of entrepreneurship in developing countries, specifically Africa, okay? So first of all, what's the problem? So the problem, well, this sort of gets, gets it across slightly. The sort of, the, the lighter colors here in terms of GDP, so low levels of GDP, okay? I'm gonna sort of skip over these quite quickly, but this intractable problem of poverty, okay? It's low levels of income associated with this, strongly related, very slow progress towards millennium goals, yeah, human uh, development index based on a host, a basket of uh, measures is a uh, very slow, negligible, or actually, you know, zero movement towards these goals. And over the years, there have been many approaches to development in, in developing countries. There's been, uh, you know, very top-down imposed approaches, uh, more recently, more bottom-up approaches, one of which most recently, recently popular is, uh, ignore the countries on this, most popular is the uh, entrepreneurship approach, okay? Entrepreneurial uh, approaches to development. It's been heavily pushed by the UN who are saying, right, this is the answer. Entrepreneurship is seen as a solution because it's sustainable, it's about sustainability, it's about auto uh, autonomy. The individuals can actually drive it themselves. But hang on a second, if we look at Africa, for instance, I quote, Africa is teeming with entrepreneurs. And here's, we have this curvilinear relationship with GDP uh, against entrepreneurial activity, where we could see actually in low wealth, let's say low wealth countries, we have high levels of entrepreneurs, and higher wealth countries with, with these, um, we also have a high level. So what's going on? It's, it's actually about the quality or the types of entrepreneurs, which is important. So it's not just about encouraging entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs are there. It's directing them and giving them the right opportunities. So, Typical view, okay? This is Aliko Dangote from uh, Nigeria, richest man in Africa, 50th richest person in the world, um, adding value by creating wealth. So it's this idea that wealth becomes almost a, uh, a public good. Everybody else gets benefit from it because it trickles down to the rest of society. So that seems as a typical view. So he's adding value. This is what entrepreneurs do, arguably. We also have adding value by improving well-being. So the less typical view, but it's adding value, okay? So improving capabilities, improving uh, individuals' options so they can do something for themselves autonomously. Also adding value, and I love this picture, I'm gonna come back to this, adding value by strengthening society, okay? So it's about social cohesion. It's about getting people to work together. So these are seen as important approaches. So what's stopping them? What's stopping them from moving? What's, what's stopping this, this huge amount of entrepreneurship from actually developing? Why isn't GDP going up? Why aren't the Millennium Girls being met? Well, arguably, we have many entrepreneurial people, people with entrepreneurial talents, who are actually using them not to benefit society. They're destroying wealth. They're destroying social cohesion. They're destroying well-being. Still entrepreneurial, it's just the talents are being misapplied. So that's one conflict situation. But of course, this, this just highlight that you have rebuilders of value. So once, you know, once conflicts have settled down, then it's the entrepreneurs who actually start to re-engage society and rebuild society, right? Make things happen at whatever level, okay? So rebuilding society. And it's, you know, it's obvious that that happens. And we're actually uh, involved with this as PBS and ISSR um, with uh, looking at entrepreneurial education in uh, contexts such as South Sudan. So there's more on that within our desk in the uh, exhibit area. But there's also slightly, probably more insidious, but less obvious, are these redis redistributors of value, okay? So the value is just being moved around, and it's this idea of corruption, right? So if you are developing, if you're developing your um, business, creating value, then actually, if somebody sees that, and there's lots of corruption, somebody's gonna try and appropriate your value, take it off you. So actually, the, what you should do is you, you should stay small, okay? Keep the business small. 
And actually, that's, that's hard to see sometimes. But what that results in is these large informal sectors of the market. Okay, so it's not a formal business market, it's large informal markets, which is hard to comment on because nobody's quite sure what size they are. But what that means is your business stays small, it's hard to grow your business, it's hard to get the support that you need because you're trying to stay beneath the radar. So how do, you, uh, how do we solve this? Well, we've got these stepping stone approaches. So this is, uh, this is Brian Mills from Cornwall College, a tiny dot here at the, um, the UWIN um, initiative that we're involved in with PBS and uh, ISSR in Nigeria. Now, the purpose of, one of the purposes of this is to solve youth employment, which is at 42% within Nigeria. But what we're trying to do is encourage informal businesses to formalize, okay? So this year, it's focusing entirely on women. So it's, it, it's movement in that direction. It's actually the biggest uh, business plan competition in the world at the moment, we think. But if somebody tells me different, that's fine. So, okay, so how are we adding value? So this is going back to the UN wave. Here's everybody in the audience, 400 people, 400 women, um, going, we win! So you win competition. So making a difference with entrepreneurship. So this year, this, this cycle, current cycle, 66,000 women entered this competition that we're involved in. 6,000 women were trained with, this year. So uh, that was Brian Mills standing in front of these uh, 400 women looming down on him. It's quite a scary scenario. 1,200 women winners who will get access to grants of up to 80,000 pounds over a one year period, continued mentoring. And that's actually being selected today. So those winners are being selected today. So as soon as this is finished, I'm going to go back and uh, check my email. Okay, that's all. Thank you.